Hey there, thank you for joining. <clears throat> Minister Roland, thank you everyone for joining. Hey, uh, I don't, I don't um, do Periscope videos, multiple Periscope videos in one day. Uh, usually I just feel inspired uh, today. So I wanted to come back on while it was flowing, while, the, while those juices are flowing. Um, and I'll just talk and people can just join. I uh, hope you, you comment. I hope you're inspired by this. I was, I'm just leaving the barbershop. Praise God. Thank God for my barber. I'm just leaving the barbershop and uh, I'm sitting there talking to my barber. Glad to have a spirit filled barber. And we're sitting there having a kind of, thank you. Gotta love TC. Um, God bless you and good afternoon to you as well. Um, so I'm, I'm just leaving the barbershop. I'm sitting in the parking lot. I wanted to get this scope out while it was on my mind. Hey, God bless you, little you. Y'all pray for me, though, because people walking by the car. Thank you, Jesus. However, uh, I just left the barbershop, and I'm in there talking with my barber, and we're talking about, I mentioned to him, uh, he said that he is really working hard on decision making. Uh, and I share with him that, uh, I'm really, I've really been praying about and focused on for myself about discernment, about discerning, uh, allies and adversaries, and more specifically about discerning, uh, opportunities and obstacles. And when I said that, something clicked in my head. Hey there, uh, Sister Jenny, something clicked in my head, uh, about a message that I made minister to our church some time ago uh, that had to do with opportunities and obstacles. I want to declare in your life that this really is a season. I don't mean it to be generic. I mean it to be genuine with everything that's within me. This is uh, the season for opportunities. God is going to give you some unusual opportunities. And what I mean by that is, so I could be specific and direct, an opportunity uh, is an idea whose time has come. God has not had you dreaming, thinking, imagining, all that kind of stuff for nothing and people think that you're crazy and you'll know what you're talking about and you'll never get there and I don't know why you're thinking about that and let me help you out for anyone who has told you uh, you ought to stop thinking about that because it's never been done you ought to thank them and you ought to thank them because it's never been done because God was waiting on you to get here so he could do it through you first that's why it has never been done. God was waiting on you for this moment to get here so it could be done through you first. So let me share with you what God shared with me, a few things that God shared with me about obstacles, uh, opportunities and obstacles, or what we'll call today bridges and barriers. I'll go from uh, the David and Goliath story, and I'll be really, really quick, but I'm just going to flow, and when I'm done, I'll be done. So if you all have to go, I understand, just replay it later. Um, so we know the story in 1 Samuel chapter 17 where uh, Israel is going against the Philistines and um, uh, David is not even a part of the army. He is uh, taking the care of the sheep. He is in the field. Uh, he's in the field chilling, doing, being faithful over what God has called him to do. That is so important. You have to be faithful over what God has called you to do. You can't think you're going to get there uh, and then be faithful. If you're not faithful here, you'll never get there. Let me say it again. You can't just think, oh, I'll be faithful when I get there. Because if you're not faithful while you're here, you'll never get there. So there's some principles that you have to practice now uh, in order to get there. So David is being faithful. He's at home doing his thing, caring for the sheep, doing what he's supposed to do. And uh, his dad sends him on what one of my associate pastors called a dummy mission. I love this. She ministered this this past Sunday about a dummy mission. And it is interesting because you got to be faithful to what you might perceive to be a dummy mission because that dummy mission set him up for destiny. Let me tell you what I mean. David's father, Jesse, sent him to check out uh, what was going on with the war to take lunch to bring back a report. When he gets there, catch this, when he gets there, Goliath is standing there running his mouth, giving the same threat that he has given uh, for the last 39 days. This is day number 40. And the Bible says that Goliath is out and he said, give me somebody who's going to fight me. Isn't it interesting that the very time that Goliath was out running his mouth, and the Bible says that he did this in the morning and in the evening for 40 days, that the very time that he was running his mouth, David happened to be there. That is not an accident. Hey there, uh, Minister Archie, and to uh, Lisa in Alabama, that is not an accident. And so with that in mind, 
my associate minister mentioned on Sunday, my associate pastor mentioned on Sunday about being faithful in a dummy mission. And, and your dummy, what you might coin as a dummy mission is going to set you up for destiny. I, I got I to gotta get that across to you. You got to be faithful where you are. You cannot expect to become faithful when you get there because if you're not faithful here, you'll never get there. I got to get that inside of your spirit. So the Bible says, that, that Goliath is there and he throws out a threat. Now catch this, because for 40 days, day and night, the men who were trained for war, the Israelites, they mm -hmm. saw uh, Goliath as a threat. They saw him as an obstacle. In 40 minutes, uh, David said, this is my opportunity. This is my time uh, to move into what's next. Oh, my God. For, for the men who were trained for war, they saw Goliath as an obstacle. For the man who was trained to win, he saw him as an opportunity. You got to be careful because even if you don't have technical training, because you've been trained to win, you see things that other your discernment tells you what others don't don't discern. And so that is so key. Well, let's fast forward. This is what happens. David goes and he says, hey, what happens to the one who kills Goliath? They tell him, hey, he gets to marry the king's daughter. Uh, the person who kills Goliath, he becomes instantly rich and he's tax free. OK, great. That was fine. Going with the story, David wasn't too motivated by that. Uh, so interestingly enough, I told y'all I'm just leaving. I'm I'm at the barber shop. Just finished in the barber shop. Praise God for my barber. I was gonna do this scope in the chair, uh, but I couldn't. I couldn't do that because I didn't want to mess my beard up. However, uh, I told him as soon as I got in the car, I was going to give this scope because it's interesting. Before I left the house, I was thinking about how upset people get when other people talk about their mama. You talk about somebody's mama or their mother, they are ready to fight. I love David, though, because David said, hold on, you talking about my daddy. Oh, y'all got to see that in the text. When David went to fight Goliath, he said, look, you, I'm coming against you because you coming against my daddy. You have spoken against the word of God, the word of the father for our lives. Now, that ain't right. Oh, my God. So something stood up inside of him. Here is how you know you have opportunities and that opportunities are not just obstacles or if you'd allow me to, to use synonyms, bridges and barriers. Um, Israel, uh, for, for all that time, they ran from Goliath. David ran at him. Read your Bible. He ran at him. Um, for 40 days, um, right, right, uh, fighting words. For 40 days, um, Israel said, oh my God, Goliath is too big for us to hit. In 40 minutes, David said, that joker's too big for me to miss. If I hit him anywhere, I'm going to hit him. If I throw anything at him, I'm going to hit him. Uh, but I really believe that David got a revelation. And the revelation that David got is what I want you to get, uh, is that Goliath was a bridge. He was not a barrier. He was a bridge. He wasn't a barrier. And, I, and I'm using the term 40 days is in the Bible. We know that. I, I use the 40 minutes just to say a short, a short time period. Um, but uh, Goliath was a bridge. He wasn't a barrier. And David got a revelation, especially if Goliath was a drawbridge. Catch this. If Goliath was a drawbridge, David got a revelation. The only way to cross a drawbridge is that the thing's got to be let down. So David said, I got to take this joker down. I got to take Goliath down in order for me to cross from, in order for me to cross the bridge from my dummy mission into my destiny. Oh my God. God has inserted a Goliath in your life. Not because Goliath is meant to be a barrier, but Goliath, whatever that Goliath is, it is your bridge and you've got to cross it. If you don't cross it, shame on you to stay where you are. But your blessing is on the other side of the bridge and you got to be willing to knock that thing down. OK, let it down. If you want me to be politically correct, let that bridge down and cross that bridge. Thank you, Lord, for what Goliath... Thanks, Tammy. Thank you, Lord, for what the Lord used David to teach us about Goliath. I know, yeah, giants, they do fall. I believe in all that wonderfulness, but you ain't just falling to fall. You got to fall so I can cross you. 
I'm not going to burn bridges. And, and one of the things he taught us is, he, he taught us, yes, this is definitely a shift in paradigm. I love, I love David because mm -hmm. the Bible says that once David knocked him down, uh, he said, I got to cut his head off. I got to cut his head off because I plan to cross this bridge uh, as I plan to have as many other people cross this bridge as much as possible. And we're going to get as many people across this bridge as possible. So what I don't want, I don't want this guy to wake up. I don't want it to be a bad concussion. So I got to take his head off. Here is the point. There are some things that God gives us the power to knock down, but you got to also understand he's giving you the power to finish it off glory to God. He doesn't just want you to knock some things down in this season. This is a free word, right? This is a free extra uh, a caveat right here. He's giving you the power and the grace to finish it off. Stop just knocking things down and giving it an opportunity to get back up. You got to finish that thing off. You got to have the spirit of the finisher. Hey, I know I just put about five different sermons uh, in the one scope, but I really just wanted you to get that, that Goliath was a bridge, not a barrier. He's an opportunity, not an obstacle. It is your paradigm shift and how you see it is how you receive it. So God is taking you really old school church. He's taking you to higher ground because just like when you're on an airplane, the higher you rise, the smaller the things look beneath you, yet they've never changed in their size, their shape, or their dimensions. They just look smaller because you've just risen above it. And I pray that God will cause you to rise above your Goliaths and see them as opportunities and not obstacles, as bridges and not barriers. Blessing to you. Love you much. I'll be back on as soon as God gives me another divine download. Make it a great day.